Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Well, I've got a pistol video for you here, and we're going to be taking a look at the P17 by Caltech. It's less than 14 ounces fully loaded, and that's 16 plus one rounds of 22 long rifle. Can a high capacity compact 22 be a reasonable option for concealed carry? Well, we are going to find out in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. Thanks for being with us. If this is your first time coming to the channel, or if you've been watching our videos before and you just haven't had a chance to do so until now, and you like our content, please consider subscribing. You can locate that subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner of your computer screen, or if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video and you can subscribe that way. It's a simple thing that helps out a whole lot, and we really appreciate it. So, the kel P17. Well... I've had some requests to look at this, and I actually was able to get my hands on this pistol uh, a while back, and I was able to shoot it. So, And this thing's been out for a little while now. It was uh, supposed to be distributed like in the end of 2019. I think I started seeing them in 2020. It was late 2020 I actually got my hands on it and got to shoot this firearm. And um, so, interestingly enough, um, I wasn't expecting a whole lot because with 22s, they're very hit or miss, you know. I've had some that perform really well and some that were not so well. So I didn't have super high expectations either way. But the P17 intrigued me just because for the size and the weight, um, you know, you've got 16 rounds in the magazine. And then, of course, you've got uh, one in the chamber. And that gives you a lot of flexibility as far as a small gun. And, uh, you know, so if you carry the two extra mags with it, you've got quite a bit of, uh, of ammunition on you for a carry gun. And we'll get to the specs there in just a second, but it's just something to think about. That's, that's quite a bit of, uh, of, of rounds to have on you at one time. We always like to do a little size comparison. And um, so the first thing I'm going to do, the gun I had just lying around that was closest in size was the Glock 43X. And of course, once again, this comparison's got nothing to do with caliber features or any of that. It's just kind of a generalization for size, because if I'm going to carry a gun, I like to look at something I have that's about the same size and think about what it's like to carry that gun. And think, okay, I get it. And of course, the Caltech is a lot lighter than this Glock. So as far as comfort goes, that goes a long way. This thing's only 14 ounces fully loaded, which is crazy. It is so crazy light. And of course, the it's a polymer gun. Lots and lots and lots of plastic in this gun. Uh, there's a lot more metal in the, the Glock. But um, of course, the ammunition for the Glock to me a lot heavier too. But just to kind of give you an idea of, of size, that's what you're looking at. So whether you decide to carry this in the waistband or whether you made this, uh, you know, put it in like a sticky and put it in your pocket or something like that, it's obviously going to be easy to carry. You get a pretty good idea of the size. All right, let's jump right into the features here. But before we do, let's take a second to thank our friends over at Don's Weaponry for providing us this beautiful example of the Caltech P17 for our tabletop review today. Don's Weaponry is a huge supporter of firearm safety and education, and we can't thank them enough for their support. So, as we take a look at this thing, um, I'm going to do a typical top-down analysis like I normally do here, and you can see that you've got a um, fiber optic front sight, and then you have your uh, adjustable rear sight here, which is kind of nice. Um, this is actually, and we'll discuss this more in the range section, but it's a, a pretty accurate weapon. So being able to get your sights uh, dialed in the way you like is going to be a definite value on this. And um, it's a pretty good setup. Now, you look at the front here, the barrel, they actually do give you the kit to convert this, to put your threaded barrel adapter on here if you want to run a suppressor on this which is nice they give you that for free your picatinny rail if you like to put lights lasers or whatever on the front of your firearm be able to do that um, the safety here you can see it's ambidextrous and the magazine release and you can see that we have an empty mag and we'll go ahead and show you that we're 
clear at the same time you can see there's nothing in the barrel and there's nothing in the firearm there so we are good to go this is more of a European style magazine release you know where you've got the piece on either side of the trigger guard there on the bottom and I like that that's what I typically see on my H and K's and sort um, disassembly of this weapon um, it's a little interesting but basically once you pull back on this all the way you've got these tabs here that you pull down and once you pull these tabs down and lock you can just pull up and this will come away and then you'll see your barrel which is fixed um, but it gives you access to everything you need to clean it it's really not that complicated um, now the way the weapon is made if you're going to do anything beyond that, I always tell people that as far as your basic cleaning and maintenance, that's fine. Um, for a lot of these weapons, if you're not a gunsmith or someone that does a lot of this, I would hesitate going any further than just the basic cleaning. Uh, most good gun shops have got a gunsmith, or at least they know a handful of good gunsmiths in the area that you can be referred to. So anything beyond that, that's probably what I would be doing. Trigger guard's pretty good size, which I like because I've got longer and bigger fingers, which I like being able to sweep in there without having a lot of complication. The trigger, I like the trigger on this gun. Um, the only thing about this trigger is it'll fool you because normally when you're shooting a, you know, any old firearm and you pull the trigger, you reach a point where the trigger, where you feel it start to you know get to the end you can you can feel the pressure building like you have a wall you come in and you can feel it with well, this one it kind of doesn't really have that and i'll cover that more in the range section but the trigger is very good and it's and it's it's a repeatable performance so you get the same kind of feel every time you shoot this thing and i really like that um it's kind of a weird grip of course you've got this big rise here where the mag release is but it ends up fitting your hand pretty well it is kind of a weird plasticky feel um, I'm not the biggest fan of the way this grip feels in my hand um, to me it does feel very cheap but you have to remember we're talking about a uh, you know a $200 retail firearm and for what you get for $200, I don't think I'm going to complain a whole lot that the grip doesn't have a, you know, a fine texture built into it because that's probably money that was easily saved uh, to do other things. But um, it is a pretty small package. And I think for the money, like I say, you get a total of three magazines with it, plus you get the threaded barrel adapter. Um, it's really not that bad. So if you're thinking about a 22 and you're thinking about something you might actually carry, well, you know, magazines, obviously, uh, there's always money in spare mags, so you can see what you get out of the box. It's a pretty good value. So talking about the range, well, like I said, you know, we're talking about an MSRP $199 gun here, so didn't have really high expectations. But when I got to shoot this thing for the first time in late 2020, um, I was actually really, really impressed with it because of a couple of simple things. I've got a lot of 22s, and no particular reason. I've just managed to pick up different ones along the way that, uh, that I've liked for different reasons, um, whether it's a revolver, the little Ruger LCR and 22, this little eight shot. I like it quite a bit. Decent little gun. Um, or something more precision shooting. I've got my little Sig Sauer uh, 1911 22. This is a whole lot of fun if you like to go out and um, shoot at things if you want to practice a lot. But some of these guns I've noticed they're picky about their ammo as good as they are. They're extremely picky about some of the cheaper ammo or some of the um, lower grain ammo. And I know that, for example, all day long, and most people probably have experienced this, if you're running, if you're running CCI, um, it's pretty reliable. I could run the mini mags through this thing all day long. Another bullet that I like that I buy a lot of is the Remington, the Golden Bullet. 
I have never had a single problem with these in any 22 I've ever owned. So if you're if you're just curious, um, these are generally a little cheaper than the CCIs, and I've never had a problem with them. So this is a great round. Um, if you do have the suppressor on, um, CCI has this little some subsonic rounds. These are the segmented ones here, and uh, they're a lot of fun to shoot. The only round I've ever had a lot of problem with with some of my higher end 22s was the uh, the Federal and I, I just couldn't understand what the problem was but no matter what I've done um, especially some of the 22s I've got several of these 22s and they have a hard time cycling um, this round just doesn't have enough energy to, to cycle the slide on this and I got to where I won't run them at all but when I use this round in the uh, Keltec, the Keltec didn't care. I brought all kinds of rounds with me um, when I got to have my shoot fest with that uh, Keltec initially, and I can tell you that it's not picky about what ammo you put through it. And I'm sure that if you shoot enough rounds, obviously you're going to get a, a stoppage of some kind just because the gun will get dirty or whatever. But uh, in initial testing with, you know, several hundred rounds there was no problems like that at all so now let's get down to accuracy okay so if you don't believe me about accuracy you can easily search um any 22 fanatic who's made a video on shooting this thing to death you can watch and see how accurate this is and um, and really like I say, if you have your rear sight set up correctly, you've got a good high visibility uh, fiber optic front sight. This is a very, very accurate firearm. Um, the trigger pull, they say, is three pounds. Uh, that's about what I got with my scale, 3.2. So it's got a very good trigger. And like I say, the trigger is interesting because it doesn't really have you know, a wall, it seems that you, you pull on it and as soon as you're at that point where you figure out to get some resistance, it's firing. And it has a very reliable and consistent reset on it. Once you get used to the way this firearm shoots, you can really send some rounds down range with it in a really nice pattern. And it does really well. So if you want accuracy, well, you know, 22 is a good round for practice to work on your skills anyway. But the Caltech, as inexpensive as it is, you know, all jokes aside, people can say what they want to, but it's a very accurate little firearm. And like I say, you know, we're talking about, you know, super light, fully loaded. So if you're considering something uh, for concealed carry and you tend to lean toward 22s, um, the Caltech P17 has high capacity. It uh, seems to be very reliable, and it's very accurate, so it's definitely worth a look. So if you do decide you want to carry the P17, there's a lot of options for doing that. Um, you can get a custom Kydex holster, obviously. You can get a leather holster. There's lots of things you can do, but as small as the firearm is, you know, this is something that could almost go in your pocket. Um, I know a lot of people have their varying opinion with stickies, but... Um, I carried this in a sticky holster and it was so comfortable, it's just absolutely ridiculous. Like I said, this thing weighs 14 ounces fully loaded. Um, you can take a sticky holster like this, you can fix it in your waistband, and once it's there, it's so light. And of course, with a tight belt, this isn't going anywhere. Um, whether you wear it at 3 o'clock, small on your back, wherever you like to carry your firearm, you can do it. Um, plus, you know, in a sticky, I still retain the option to put this in my front pocket, which I've done that too, and I carried it both ways. Um, in both situations, the firearm is so ridiculously light, uh, it's like you don't even really know that you're carrying it. I think that uh, people who carry 22s, um, they generally have different reasons that uh, people I've talked to that carry them they say it's about you know capacity they, they know the 22 is not the most ballistically capable round but it it obviously with good shot placement can work but they are convinced that with capacity they can make up for other shortcomings and with the ability to carry you know um, 16 rounds plus one plus two more 16 round magazines on your person um, if 
that should be more than enough to deal with any possible situation. Plus, if you like to just do shooting, having the extra magazines is a lot of fun. But uh, it's very light, very easy to carry. So whether you did a custom uh, holster, or whether you did something simple like a sticky, it's not going to be any problem at all. Overall impressions of the kel P17. Well, for me, if you're looking for a firearm that's got high capacity, if you're an individual that uh, feels comfortable carrying 22 long rifle, for an MSRP of $200, 17 rounds of 22 accuracy, and seems to have pretty good reliability, I don't really see where you can go wrong. Now, yeah, there are some things that could be better. Um, I'll be the first one to admit, you know, I don't like the... The, it's got a really slick, plasticky feel. Um, if I was going to carry this with any consistency, I would have to do something. I'd have to put some grip tape or something. Just so when I grab this, I feel like I've got a good positive feel on the firearm. Now, if I'm just practice shooting, if I'm just plinking, having fun, it's fine just the way it is. But it just feels way too slick to me. I'm not a big fan of that finish. Okay, And, you know, it's not going to win any beauty contests. But it's a firearm. I think people get way too caught up in how a firearm looks sometimes versus how it functions. So, you know, if you're if you're wanting to know how I feel about a $200 firearm that so far doesn't seem to have any real issues, I'd say, you know, be as comfortable as you want to be. Um, and as inexpensive as the firearm is, you know, it's a, it's a good little backup gun that you can keep if you need to keep a, a spare gun somewhere. Um, you know, and don't want to put a lot of money into it. That's one you could do. Um, to me, it's been really good so far. And until I see a reason to say otherwise, I don't have anything bad to say about it. So that's going to wrap it up for the P-17. All right. Well, we appreciate you being with us as always. And uh, we're going to be back very soon with another video for you. So until that time, as always, everybody, please be safe and have a great day. Thank you.